As everyone finds themselves startled by the unexpected knock on the door, Lin Yun assures everyone not to panic. He is confident that the accountant may have come to assign tasks for the day. With a creaking sound, he opens the door, and there stands the baldy, just as Lin Yun had expected. It seems the accountant is feeling a little extra happy to see Lin Yun for some reason. In any case, the boy starts to descend the stoop while asking about the whereabouts of Culinary Boo's loving Hulk. The man simply replies that the Hulk is supposed to be in the kitchen, to which the boy just nods, and starts walking away with the deadpan look on his face. But it seems that the old guy is walking on eggshells. He wanted to let Lin Yu know about his task for the day, but instead, he just lets out a sigh and decides to keep quiet. After all, someone as wealthy as our boy is not exactly tied down by rule. After he leaves the scene, the old man becomes his usual self and starts barking his orders for others to stop stalling and get their asses to work. But the bearded behemoth in particular remains silent while the old coot is yelling at him to drag his big ass out to the hotel to perform his assigned task. However, the man is too preoccupied in his thoughts, admiring how Lin Yu looks like a master from a great family. With black smoke billowing from the chimney, it seems that the culinary hulk has already taken over the kitchen and we can clearly see that he is probably cooking up something rather otherworldly. Sensing the boy's presence, the man turns around to greet his fine wine buddy and wholeheartedly mentions that he has just made a bone broth, inviting him to try it while it is hot. But as you might have guessed, just looking at that thick green soup is enough to kill anyone's appetite, so the guy dodges the bullet by mentioning that he is here to discuss something serious. The man perks up with curiosity and asks what it might be. That is when the boy bluntly asks the man about his work experience, whether he actually enjoys working here. And it seems that the cat is finally out of the bag, so the big guy wastes no time before admitting it, while giving off those sad vibes. But then he finally lays it all out, his frustration boiling over as he recounts his backstory. He tells how he used to be a bigwig in the depths of the ghost realm, but then he fell victim to some conspiracies. After facing numerous ups and downs in his life, he found himself teetering on the edge of death, left with no choice but to seek refuge with the lady boss of the hotel. While stirring his broth, he further reveals that his injuries have healed in recent years. However, he paints a bleak picture of his situation, explaining how the lady boss is a nasty piece of work. She cunningly lured him into a contract with practically unachievable goals, trapping him here far away from the vast world and the sweet nectar of great wine it has to offer. After hearing this, the boy does not beat around the bush. He straightforwardly asks the big guy if he would be willing to seize another chance at freedom by willingly joining him. But the dude just shrugged it off, saying the lady boss would never release him. Without missing a beat, Lin Yu commands him his attention and whips out the contract paper right under the old man's nose. However, the guy could not believe it, so he takes a careful glance, only to find himself shocked once again. He expresses his disbelief by asking how Lin Yu acquired it. You see, my man is loaded, and those who say money can't buy everything are just making excuses for their poor asses. Anyway, the boy does not even hesitate before ripping the contract into pieces, rendering it null and void. But the man just cannot believe his eyes. He is stunned in his place with a shocked expression. Lin Yu assured him that while he might not taste freedom itself, he would drown in all the tasty booze he could handle. After hearing this, the booze-loving guy immediately pledges his entire existence without an ounce of hesitation or doubt. But it seems like the old man is more keen on adventuring with his wine buddy than dwelling on the booze offer. With a flourish, he signed the new contract, sealing the deal. From now on, he is at Yulin's beck and call, all by his own choice of course. The system notification promptly pops up, informing that the boy has signed a contract with the ghost Jiangju, and he can now also check the Jiang stats. As we take a peek at the panel, we discover that he is a malevolent ghost at his core, with both his skills boasting and a class rating. It does not take long for the boy to realize that this man's attributes are a hundred times better than mine, making him an extraordinary being. Now, the boy is pretty much convinced that despite the rundown appearance of this hotel, the locals here are surprisingly strong. Without the restorative rules of the dungeon or his own wealth, he would probably be six feet under by now. But the guy is feeling pretty grateful to see that things are actually going quite well for him. After whipping up the broth, the behemoth drops to his knees and pledges his loyalty, reminding the boy that he is now at Lin Yu's command. Lin Yu immediately grabs the Goliath's hand, gesturing him to stand up, while informing him that there is no need for formalities here since the culinary hulk will always be by his side to rescue him from every danger. After that, both of them happily clink their glasses for a toast to cherish the moment. It seems that it is already evening outside, and inside, the crew is sitting on a bench watching a crimson notification that informs them that only three players have survived today. And as you can see, the purple head must be the one who lost her life today. It is at this point we learn that the purple head had been ripped apart for offending a customer when she was doing her cleaning duty. The boy is feeling a bit jittery too, I mean, let us be real, the place is crawling with nasty ghosts, and as loaded as he is, his cash can only get him so far. 
and it is not a one-time thing, because the game will always be open after every two weeks, so he has no choice but to get even stronger to ensure his survival. Just as the boy is walking down the porch, a familiar voice calls out to him from behind. He turns his head around, only to see Zio lie sprinting toward his way, and she seems to be looking more charming than she usually does. When she approaches the guy, she immediately expresses her gratitude for ensuring her survival on her first day. In response, the boy downplays it, saying that helping out is just as good for him. The lady then proceeds to hand over a little piece of paper, insisting he take it. The boy gives the piece of paper a curious look before asking what it is. Zio Lai reveals that she is from the river city and her family is renowned in that district, so if he ever needs help in the real world, he can count on her, and this paper has her digits for later use. Out of the blue, a notification pops up in the sky, congratulating everyone for completing the mission. Since they managed to survive in this underworld hotel for two whole days, the dungeon will vanish. Just like that, the whole area starts to disintegrate, and the boy finds himself back in his house, Standing in the exact same spot he was before his departure, Lin Yu is giving this look to this phone number, wondering how did he end up with a lady's phone number. In any case, he lays the paper on the table right beside his glass and proceeds to check his watch, only to realize that it has been two days in this thrilling game, yet only a second has passed in reality since he had left. Suddenly, his eyes start to shimmer as he summons forth his ghost, Zhang, who finds himself rudely interrupted during his drinking session. However, Zhang does not forget to ask his master the reason for his summon, but the man says nothing. Needless to say, the behemoth is making a sour look on his face for the intrusion, and just proceeds with chugging down his booze once again. Seems like Lin Yu just wanted to double check if the contract he made with Jiang is still intact, and he is overall pleased with the results. Not only that, but it looks like his other items are still safely tucked away inside his inventory. Hey, it is one of the perks that comes with becoming a ghost master, or in other words, a ghost commander. He then starts strolling, watching over the city from his apartment like he is the freaking Batman of this Gotham city. Finally, he has realized that the increasing number of shady activities in recent years were mainly the work of ghost commanders with evil intentions. Given that he will be getting called out once again every two weeks, it seems he does not have much time to prepare. He wants to gather information, but he figures turning to the government is not the best option. Instead, he believes the forum of this game would be more suitable as a source of information. After all, the amount of secrets he holds might get him into trouble if he sought help from the government. With that in mind, Lin Yu sits down before his system and ensures to generate a fake IP address before delving deeper. After entering the login credentials, he hits enter and all the information is laid out before him. You can pause the video and read it thoroughly, as we are moving out of this panel since Lin Yu does not seem to find anything worthwhile in the forum. The only thing that piques his interest a little bit is an announcement from the number 9 investigation center that holds codes and guidelines. Just as the boy opens the message, he reads, By using powers, profit making is not allowed, hurting people is not allowed, and voluntary exposure of the existence of the thriller game, also known as the global menace. And anyone who violates the guidelines will face consequences. But it seems the boy is not really concerned about these guidelines for now. Being a newbie, he wants to read the guide for players. As soon as he clicks the download button for the guide, we learn that all global menace dungeons exist in a place called the Ghost Realm. The Ghost Realm is vast, brimming with countless ghosts, but these ghosts can only kill humans according to rules. They are divided into seven levels, while human ghost commanders have nine levels. Level 1 and level 2 ghost commanders can contract with vengeful ghosts, level 3 players can contract with malevolent ghosts, and level 4, 6, and 7 can contract with wrathful ghosts. Finally, at level 9 and 8, players can contract with malevolent ghosts, while the remaining three general, martial, and king are big shots. Meanwhile, our culinary behemoth Jiang is a malevolent ghost. Although players can only contract with ghosts respective to their commander level, Lin Yu's primo ghost contract can get him any ghost regardless of the difference in levels. According to the info on the forum, the Global Menace has had five batches of closed beta testers totaling 100,000. Except for the first batch, which is suspected to have been wiped out, all other batches have survivors. Some of them got soul purification liquor by luck in the ghost realm and even became ghost commanders. Lin Yu clearly remembers that it took him three bottles of this purification liquor to lure Jiang into a contract so he basically still has some stock left. He also found some information about trading items, and the forum provides the exact platform to exchange items. People with their lives on the line will inevitably rely on it, and it seems Lin Yu is thinking about trading his remaining liquor bottles for something else. Suddenly, a notification pops right in front of him, something about the offline trading rally. Lin Yu immediately opens the message, which basically reveals that the government is organizing a trade fair in River City. This only means that trading on the forum is not enough to meet the demand. Apparently, the reason behind this physical fair is because buying and selling online is not trusted. So, this fair gives everyone a chance to trade face to face, and it seems that the boy is looking forward to going to the fair. But to register, he has to make an account first. 
with an almost devilish glint in his eyes. The boy registers himself with the username King of Hades. After three days have passed, the first thing that greets us is a notification about the opening of the rich system. The system also congratulates the boy for acquiring some nether tokens. While Lin Yu is ready with his suitcase, he commands the system to open the panel. Sure enough, the attribute panel arrives, and he marvels at all the skills and artifacts tucked inside his system. It seems that the day of the fair has arrived, and Lin Yu eagerly grabs his case by the handle and starts striding out of the apartment with full joy, ready to hit the road to River City. From there, he will head directly to the fair location. It was Monday at 3.20 in the morning when he received the private message about the fair's location. Now, it is 5 p.m. on Thursday. After acquiring the map, name tag, and mask from Locker 46 at Dot Golden Mall, he is heading out to his destination through River City's West Ring High. The cab driver seems quite creeped out to see where they are heading, but the boy is just grinning from ear to ear. Apparently, they are going towards an abandoned factory in the Fieldsec district of River City, which seems to be quite a shady place at first glance. Upon arrival at the location, two ghosts guard the fort while the participants of the fair stand in line, awaiting their turn to cross the checkpoint before entering the factory. The boy looks at his ID card. Although the forum's offline fair is complicated as heck, but it is as secure as it can get. The masks will keep everyone from prying with spiritual awareness, and the name tag has yin energy to prevent forgery. Out of the blue, an unknown person grabs our boy's attention, informing him under his breath about the ghosts guarding the door. Apparently, these ghosts are the malevolent ghosts of Ebai, one of the forum's founders. It does not take the boy long to realize that this level of yin energy belongs to malevolent ghosts, which is quite weaker than Zhang's energy. However, he is convinced that these are certainly not Yi's best ghosts, given that they are on guard duty at the door. Finally, we see the ghost checking out Lin Yu's ID card. After verifying his identity, the monster proceeds by telling him to wear the name tag, and then he will be free to join the fair. He also reminds him to go to the appraisal office in case he is here to sell items. Sure enough, the boy starts to walk down towards the appraisal's booth, and by the looks of it, he realizes that the setup seems to be modern. However, he still has doubts about whether it really has the ability to identify the class of yin energy tools and materials. The blondie from before chimes in once again, and seeing Lai Yu's confused face, he assumes that this boy must be new in the joint. So, he proceeds by enlightening our boy that the machine before him is the official instrument produced by the Number 9 Investigation Center, which can divide objects into Class A, B, and C according to their spiritual energy. And not to mention, each class has three levels as well. Some consumable and special items that cannot be classified as such, such as charms and pills, are evaluated by three senior players invited by the forum. With a broad smile, he assures the boy not to worry, as his items would not remain unvaluated. Lin Yu thanks the guy for the information while using his tag name, Wild Saber. The boy finally realizes that these folks are not fooling around, as they are prepared for everything. The capabilities of the people here and the technology being used are not something to scoff at. Either way, he decides not to delve deep and just feels confident about the value of his items. He is eagerly looking forward to this fair. It seems the artifact evaluation is going on full swing, and the guy who just evaluated his goodie gets to hear that he has a level 1 class tool of yin energy, and its function is to probe, which is not bad at all according to these shady clowns. We also see our boy standing in line, and the guy from before is accompanying him. This wild saber guy seemingly expresses his astonishment at this level 1 degrees Celsius class tool. He mentions that even if it is just a probe tool, its worth still goes into hundreds of thousands of dollars. After hearing this, Lin Yu is pretty confident that his necklace must be a priceless possession to have, given that it is a necklace of grudges, which is a class B offensive defensive yin energy tool. The other guy also gets his tool evaluated, and his tool is called Iron Ore of Yin Energy, which is a material that belongs in Class C, a tool of yin energy. The next in line also gets his item evaluated. But sadly for him, his necklace does not hold any value since it has already depleted its yin energy. The guy just walks off, looking like he got rejected by a girl over some silly thing like dick size. But hey, my man's a sigma male, he is not sweating over trivial rejections like that. Finally, it is his turn to get his artifact checked, but he graciously offers his spot to his new line buddy. Even though he has only seen people leaving disappointed with their trashy artifacts, he is sure there is some weird stuff out there that might catch his eye. And if it does, he is gonna swoop in without hesitation. Wild Saber confidently plops his artifact on the platform. Almost instantly, the bell rings indicating the completion of the evaluation. And the owner of the item is just losing his mind with anxiety, wishing upon his lucky stars for the dice to roll in his favor and turn his item into a Class B treasure. But oddly enough, the results have not been announced yet. The clown with the purple head remarks that he does not seem to identify this object as a yin energy tool, nor does it resemble any type of material. The one with glasses has an entirely opposite observation, mentioning that this object seems to contain a ton of yin energy. And the one with the thin mustache is just as lost as his butt is, so he gives his final verdict. They cannot guarantee its quality, so the owner is free to set the price. The man grabs his stuff and starts striding away, his mood visibly sulking. But Lin Yu gives him an assuring pat on the shoulder, telling him not to lose hope. 
he wishes him luck, saying he will definitely find an interested buyer after all. Though Lin Yu's words do not seem to help much, and the guy cannot help but sob with tears. Suddenly, a system notification arrives, mentioning that an A-class tool of yin energy has been detected nearby, going by the name Ominous Bandage of the Pharaoh. Lin Yu almost loses his shit when he realizes that the seemingly trashy relic in the blondie's hand is actually an A-class relic. Just when the boy was lost in his thoughts, one of the clowns reminds Lin Yu that it's his turn now. So, the boy walks towards the machine. While he is doing so, he tells the system to give him a thread of copper coins of yin energy. Even though he summons a whole handful of coins, he carefully places just one to avoid drawing too much attention. As soon as he sets the coin down, the buzzer blinks, signaling the completion of the evaluation. The purple clown retrieves the coin, deeming it nothing more than ordinary yin energy material. However, the chubby one interjects, arguing that the yin energy seems exceptionally pure, almost as if there are no impurities present. To clear any confusions further, the chubby one grabs the coin for himself and takes a closer look, only to realize it belongs to the Cosmos Bank, which means it is the currency of ghosts. He immediately tosses the coin towards his baldy friend, who also seems quite shocked after examining the currency. It appears that this copper coin of yin energy is in better shape than he has ever seen in dungeons. His eyes widen further as he remembers that among the hidden rules of the ghost realm, ordinary yin energy materials and human possessions hold no value. In most cases, humans cannot trade with ghosts. However, if humans possess nether tokens, recognized by ghosts as backed by the Cosmos Bank, they can trade with them. But getting your hands on ghost money is not easy though, especially for a human ghost commander. So the only thing that crosses this bald guy's mind is that this kid must be someone extraordinary. He clocks the tag name, Kings of Hades, and it rings a bell, but he cannot quite put his finger on where he has seen it before. Maybe it was one of those mysterious loners from the third batch. Out of curiosity, the baldy does not hesitate to ask where he got this item from. The boy quickly replies that it is just a part of his overall success. Purplehead initially plays it cool about the underworld currency, but then he explodes, desperately demanding to trade the coins with the boy for $200 each copper coin. He even throws in a request to be friends. Quick as a whip, Lin Yu calculates the total value of one thread of copper coins, almost worth $200,000 if he gets $200 per copper coin. While the boy seems tempted by the offer, the bald one interrupts their deal, questioning if his buddy is trying to pull a fast one. He reminds him that ghost transactions are not just based on the face value of the copper coins but also on how much yin energy they hold and the condition of the coin. Since the copper coin before them is brand new, brimming with yin energy, the entire community would willingly buy it at a price of $400 per coin. After that, the boy pulls out an entire stash of these coins and agrees for the deal, but before throwing the coins in the baldy's way he asks him if he is sure he can buy all of these. The baldy immediately reassures the boy, letting him know that even if he takes out 100 such coins, their form can certainly handle it. After getting the confirmation he needed, the boy proceeds to open the bag and throws all 1,000 coins onto the valuation machine. Literally, everyone reels in sheer shock at the absurd amount of coins cascading before their eyes. The baldy starts panicking at the sight of the sheer amount and wastes no time dialing his phone to call his master, you buy. Even the purple head retracts from his previous words, admitting that the forum cannot handle so much money in one go. He then asks the boy if he would be willing to sell him some, offering to raise the initial price of $400 to $550 per coin. He would like to buy 20 tokens in total. With the clowns making offers, the crowd gets antsy to grab some coins for themselves. They waste no time rushing towards Lin Yu, throwing out offers left and right. Some even go as high as $680 for a single coin. Before he knows it, Lin Yu finds himself surrounded by eager buyers, each hoping to strike a deal with him. And the blondie, who is looking at this eager crowd is quite sure that he is not getting his chance to buy these coins any day. Meanwhile, my man just cannot help but marvel at his ultimate rich system, which keeps bestowing him with such opportunities. However, Lin Yu is not ready to just hand over his coins to anyone. He sees this as a great opportunity to gauge who he should side with, who has greater strength, and so on. After picking out a few powerful contenders, he will only consider those who offer him maximum profits. Suddenly, a commanding voice cuts through the riled-up mob, leaving everyone stunned in their tracks. The crowd begins to disperse as a lady clad in white strides ahead toward Lin Yu. The clowns behind the boy immediately bow their heads out of respect for this lady, leaving Lin Yu with many questions. As the scene transitions, we finally learn that this female figure is none other than Master Yu Bai. It was clear from the beginning that this lady must be the big wig behind that form, but it seems we will have to wait for the next part to arrive before we can learn more about her. With that said, show your love for the series by liking the video, and let me know if you want me to keep going. If the response is good, I'll try to keep updating it as frequently as possible. Until next time.